Hi, this is Howard Rheingold, and, and we're talking with the conveners of the workshop on capturing connected learning when and where it happens, um, a workshop on program evaluation. So I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves and then tell us uh, about what you hope is going to happen in your workshop. Great. Who do you want to start? I'll start if that is helpful. Sure. Sure, I'm Vera Michaelcheck, and I am the Director of Evaluation and Research at Stanford University in the Office of the Vice Provost for Teaching and Learning. I'm Nick Wilson. I'm a postdoctoral researcher and educational programs associate uh, in the same organization that Vera works for. And I'm Bill Penuel, and I'm a faculty member in Learning Sciences and Human Development at the University of Colorado Boulder School of Education. Okay, so what's what's going to happen in your workshop? And is this like a three-hour workshop? Is that what you're uh, planning? We actually had a we had a build for the longer session, and oh, it's going to be six hours. Yeah, yeah. Right. And what we really want to do is is help participants who run after-school and out-of-school programs think about what the elements of connected learning are that characterize their programs to really go through and think deeply about the design principles that inform their work and how they implement those and then from there to build a, what we call a theory of action or a theory of change so that we can link the things that they're doing that they think matter most to the whole arc of, of programming, learner experience and then the kinds of outcomes or the kinds of things that they believe learners carry forward from that experience. And I had through our project with the Connected Learning Research Network our team has developed a number of survey instruments and interview protocols that we'll be sharing as resources to help programs uh, once they have their theory of action to select things that might be relevant for program evaluation uh, in their particular program. And we're calling this documenting when and where it happens because one of the things we're trying to do is help people think about unobtrusive measures, things that they can capture while uh, people are engaged in activities, use artifacts from uh, programs, and be, be clear about that. Uh, so that's one of the things that we hope uh, people will gain some experience with, thinking about how they might apply and use uh, our resources and instruments that we've developed through our longitudinal research uh, in their programs for evaluation purposes. The title of your workshop, uh, when and where it happens um, kind of implies that we're talking not just about the classroom. Can you give us some idea of, of what the where else and what the challenges right. are there? Well, I can start there and Vera, if you want to add, one of the things that we do in our connected learning survey and the survey of connected learning principles is we ask young people to report for some kind of activity that they love doing and that they say that they learn a lot every time they do it. So, well, where are the different places that you do this activity? What kinds of support do you get from other in these activities? Uh, what audiences outside any particular program where they might be um, uh, engaged in the activity do they hope to reach through the things that they produce? So when we say when and where it happens, what's different about connected learning is it happens all in lots of different places and not necessarily just in a program that's being evaluated. So we're going to wrestle with that quite explicitly in the context of our workshop and, and how to think about that. And in addition, to the, um, in addition to the connected learning aspects that Bill just highlighted, that we really are talking about learning across an ecosystem where it's not just in one setting, but it's really across settings. The other thing we mean by the title, when and where it happens, is that we want to help practitioners build on their intuition about, about what the critical moments are for learning and how they can capture, document that so that they can both represent that to others who care about it, whether it's families, whether it's stakeholders, whether it's funders, and also that they can use that to build their programs. Um, Nick, you, what are your expectations for, for the program? What, what do you ex uh, hope to contribute and participate in? I'm actually really excited about this workshop. It's a workshop that I, I wish I could be a participant in, um, even more so than a facilitator. Um, I'm really hoping that we get a, a range of people from all these different types of environments and different types of, whether it be after school sites or in schools, um, doing all different types of programs, maybe with digital media or connecting kids through Minecraft or whatever, um, and, and really starting to think deeply about 
what are, as Vera said, sort of these outcomes that we're trying to get um, in creating these different types of connected learning environments. Wonderful. It sounds like uh, it's going to be a pretty rich uh, set of experiences. Uh, presumably, with an amount of time that you have and the experience you bring to it, uh, practitioners ought to be able to set up their own program evaluation. Is that a fair we want We really want people to feel like this is something they can do. Uh, and as Vera said, uh, part of the, our message is build on your intuitions and part of this is turning the things that you know to be the case into a way to collect data more systematically and to analyze it. And of course it's great if evaluators want to come to this too and so we encourage people to come either as program leaders or as evaluators or as teams uh, to our particular workshop and uh, learn together uh, from uh, what we have to offer here. One of the things we want to really help people document is, is the basic participation. Who comes? How long do they stay? How often do they come? And that is, as a foundational element, really then helps us describe um, what what those participants do when they're actually at the center. What are the nature of the activities? What, what are the learning opportunities that are provided? From there, we can really think about what the outcomes are. Whether we want to call it, um, as many of us would like to call it, repertoizing practice. What is it that people become used to doing and they can, and they can take elsewhere and they can link to other settings and engage in, um, bring those, bring those it's more than skills, really. It's just a way of being in the world, a way of, of interacting with the environment. And, um, and it's, it's very much an experientially oriented way of looking at, at practice, a very much an experientially way, oriented way of thinking about what the program provides. So there's a, there's a when are the likely moments for them to be learning, what actually is happening, how might that be sustained within your program, and where, does that, where do the participants, the kids that are there, take that next? And we Wonderful. talk a lot about what it is that you hear kids saying and doing that tells you that your program is successful and using that as a basis for deciding what it is you should be measuring as an outcome. So not taking uh, off the top what the funder says you should ha have as an outcome or some kind of off-the-shelf measure, but really attending carefully to what you know and experience uh, as success among the participants in your program as the basis for figuring out what your evaluation should be about. When you put it that way, Bill, I, I feel that one of the things we're trying to do in this workshop is help embolden practitioners make the argument for why those their programs matter. There's an argument for each and every one of these programs, and we don't, I think too often, all researchers get, get a little bit intimidated by a context in which, which um, the, the testing regime that has so come to dominate our sense of what how we can document and represent learning really has has shifted I think a lot of conversations and it shouldn't shift the conversation in the informal learning space. We should really feel um, emboldened and and not skittish in this environment and and in the and give ourselves license to make our arguments for things that we think really matter in terms of the work that we're doing with youth. Well I think you give a, a really good idea of what uh, people should expect and um, and maybe next year people will come back and talk about what it is that they did and, ha and how it succeeded. So I'll see you in Irvine. Great. Thank you, Howard. Thank Looking you, forward to seeing everybody there. Bye. Take care.